So I'm going to be talking a little bit about managing assessments at scale. I'm going to be talking about how group member evaluation tool has been used at Wharton and how that how we've been able to uh, use that for peer evaluation in a very large class. And um, so we'll be talking about that. The, uh, I'll also be talking, my title here, Feedback, Reflection, and Comprehension. I'm going to be talking mostly about feedback and reflection, and only a little bit at the end about comprehension. So uh, a little bit about the Wharton School. The Wharton School is the university, it is the business school of the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, within the Wharton School, we have four degree programs. We have an undergraduate uh, BA, BS in economics. Uh, which, which enrolls about 2,600 students. We have um, our MBA program, which enrolls about 1,800 students. That's probably what we are best known for. Um, and we also have an executive MBA program, uh, which uh, has two locations, one in Philadelphia and one on the West Coast in San Francisco, and then about 200 PhD students. The courses that I'm involved in are all in our degree programs and related initiatives. And until the pandemic, all of the courses associated with our deep degree programs were on campus face to face courses, although now obviously we've had a year of remote instruction and we have uh, some faculty who are interested in um, permanently incorporating some of the hybrid elements uh, into their courses and that's a little bit what I'll be talking about at the very, very end. Okay, so why feedback fruits. Um, as is often the case in business school education, we have a very heavy team-based curriculum at Wharton. So about at least half of our courses incorporate group work of some sort. And we have a very, as a result of that, we have a very high need for an intra-group peer evaluation tool. So uh, the, we need the ability for students to be able to evaluate uh, other members of their group as group members. Um, as we were looking for a new tool to replace a legacy peer evaluation tool that we had been using for many years, we really needed the ability to read and use Canvas groups. We needed a much better user interface than what we had. The legacy tool um, was, was entirely unusable by our faculty and, and required a lot of setup uh, on our team side. I'll be talking about that in just a moment. And we also really wanted much tighter integration with Canvas for a variety of reasons. We piloted the group member evaluation uh, tool from Feedback Fruits in spring 2020. So yay for pandemic remote emergency, emergency remote teaching uh, semester. Um, and it was a huge success. Uh, during that term, we um, also piloted uh, the peer review tool because we needed it in a very large enrollment course. Um, and, and that was also successful. And the success of that really made us look really deeply at the other tools within the Feedback Fruits tool set. And we're like, hey, we want all of them now um, because that, 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 had been, that had been so successful for us. So the course that I wanna talk, or the courses that I wanna talk about today are ones that are taught by Dr. Anne Greenhall. She is the Deputy Director of the Wharton Leadership Program and she's an adjunct professor of management. She teaches, um, two classes for, for Wharton. She teaches uh, a senior capstone course, which is Management 399. She also teaches a first year intro course for our undergraduates, um, which in uh, a, a legacy version of this course before the undergraduate cur curriculum was revised in uh, 2017 was uh, Management 100. Now this is called Wharton 101. So I'll be talking um, about her use of feedback fruits in in Management 399, which is a small enrollment course, and then expanding that to a course of a much larger scale, which is uh, her Wharton 101 class. So in both classes, Anne asks students to give feedback to and to receive feedback from their teammates, and then to reflect on that feedback. Previously, uh, she'd used a, a legacy tool for this purpose. And the legacy tool really required updating. It was built on an old technology stack that was being phased out at Wharton. And it was a tool that required really significant resources for our team to set up and to support. It was not something that was user friendly. So it was not something that we could ever deploy as a self service model for our faculty who were interested in using it. Um, in Anne's class in Management 399 and in the legacy version of, of the large enrollment course, uh, Wharton Management 100, 
twice during the semester, students would provide individual and group feedback and then reflect on it. And to accomplish these activities, students needed to um, interact with multiple Canvas assignments. So you'll see here on the screenshot on the right hand side that um, there were two assignments each for the first round and the second round of the individual feedback and the group feedback. So there was sort of a lot of moving parts to this. It was kind of confusing for students what they were supposed to do where. So that was sort of an ongoing struggle, both in Management 399 and Management 100. The legacy peer evaluation tool also required, uh, was very cumbersome to use and required many multiple manual tasks. So um, the teaching team needed to move feedback from the legacy system, from a report generated by the legacy system into Canvas for students to be able to see it. Uh, a custom script was developed years ago to take that feedback um, from, its, from the report and uh, aggregate it into a way in which the teaching team could use it, which meant that they couldn't really update anything, otherwise the script would stop, work, would stop working. And from there, they would copy and paste what came out of that CSV file, and into, they would copy and paste each feedback, feedback for each individual student into a Word document, save it with the student's names, and then upload, upload that to Canvas um, as a uh, assignment comment to the students so that they could see the feedback that they got from, from their peers. Students would then go into this assignment, look at the feedback, reflect on it, and then write a reflection in a different Canvas assignment. So there were all of these moving parts. It was complicated for students, and it was especially complicated for the teaching team. This is not something that's sustainable in large enrollment courses. And when it was when this process was used in Management 100, it put a really big burden on the TAs to do this work. Time and energy that TAs could have been used could have used in much more productive and useful ways with students. So Feedback Fruits solved a lot of these problems. We we're really excited by the capabilities of Feedback Fruits because a lot of the things that Anne was asking students to do in this class were really consistent with, with what the capabilities of Feedback Fruits allows for. So we, we piloted the group member evaluation uh, tool from Feedback Fruits in about a dozen courses in spring 2020. And one of them was Management 399. Again, it's a small enrollment, senior capstone course. Students, there were about 20 students enrolled in the course that semester, and they worked in groups of four to five students. Twice during the semester, again, they provided feedback on individuals who were in their groups and then also on the group itself, how well the group functioned. Then they reflected on the feedback that they received. They did two rounds over the course of the semester for this. And um, the tool really worked very seamlessly. Um, they were able to, the teaching team was able to see who had done what. They were able to readily access that. Students were able to immediately see the feedback as soon as that was released. And it was really, really, really successful. Um, here are just a couple of uh, comparisons about the benefits of, the, of what the feedback groups group member evaluation tool offered versus the legacy peer eval tool that we had been using. Students were able to complete everything in one place versus going into having to do uh, multiple assignments and, and having some confusion around that. Feedback Fruits automatically presented feedback to students, which was awesome. It was a huge, huge, huge time savings uh, versus, um, versus needing to manually manipulate that information to be able to make it pre presented to students within Canvas. Um, additionally, students had to access the same system, uh, the same external system to complete the peer evaluation, uh, regardless of, of what course they were evaluating things for. And so that was also an opportunity for confusion from students because they had to go into a different system and then select the course that they were working with there. So it was a, a, another po possibility for confusion. Feedback Fruits reads Canvas groups, which was a huge benefit for us. The legacy system, did not do that. The legacy system presented a list of all of the students in the course and required students to select who they were they were providing feedback for. Um, and then again, uh, self-evaluation and reflection are both automatically selected option, automatically provided options within feedback groups. You, you turn self-evaluation on with a toggle, you can turn reflection on with a toggle. It is very easy to incorporate those elements without having to create additional assignments within Canvas to collect that information. So Anne loved this in Management 399, and as a result, was able to envision bringing this into Wharton 101, which she had previously not included in Wharton 101, in part because of 
the, the cumbersome nature of trying to deal with this process that she just could not do for a class that was as large enrollment as Wharton 101 was. So Wharton 101, this is a class, this class is called Business and You, Exploring Business Pathways and Developing Your Potential. It's a class that's, it's a revision, as I said, of a legacy course. Um, it's a half credit pass fail course that's offered every fall and all incoming Wharton undergraduates, whether they're first year students or transfer students, enroll in this course the first fall that they are at Wharton. The class has about 650 students, about 650 students um, enrolled in total. Uh, across 12 sections. So we have 12 different Canvas sites that we uh, synchronize using Blueprint courses in Canvas. Um, within those 12 courses, they work on teams of 10 throughout the semester. This course is team taught by Anne Greenhall, who's, who also taught the, the Management 399 course that I was just talking about, um, as well as Scott Romiga and uh, our Vice Dean for the Wharton Undergraduate Division, Diana Robertson. This course involves, um, in, in the before times, this course involved one large lecture meeting on Mondays and then uh, with, a, with about you know, 200 students or so um, in that lecture. Uh, and that lecture was done three times over the course of, of Monday and then uh, a recitation section. As part of the move to, to emergency remote teaching, we shifted that large Monday lecture section to an asynchronous video that students had to watch. And that is something that they're going to be retaining as they move forward. They have completely eliminated the lecture section as something students enroll in. And now all of that content is being delivered uh, through asynchronous videos. And like I said, that's, that's a, a, a change that I'm really excited about um, being a permanent part of this course. So, the Feedback Fruits group member evaluation was added to Wharton 101 when it was taught last fall. Um, the success in Management 399 uh, gave the, the teaching team for Wharton 101 the confidence that this would work. Um, again, it was a much, much, much larger group of students, so 650 students who were using this. Um, it was configured to work with the Canvas groups. Um, students provided individual feedback to all group members. Uh, and then they were, we also required self-assessment, which was which we're able to do just by selecting the self toggling on the self-assessment option in the settings, as you see here. And then the analytics really made it very easy for the teaching team to see who had done what here. Um, I, I'm showing you the actual course data here um, because it's just showing group numbers, group names rather, um, which are numbered after the, the sections that they're in. Um, so you don't see any actual real students, any names associated with them, but they could really easily see who had completed the assessments and who had not. And then they also did the same thing where, where students were evaluating the group itself, how well the group functioned. And again, in a business school where, where leadership and, and um, how people function together as a team is part of the curriculum, being able to think about this, being able to provide feedback on it and being able to um, to iterate on that in their own performances um, as leader, as team leaders, as team members is really important. So again, the group member evaluation configured to work with Canvas groups, students provided feedback based on how well they functioned as a group. And then they reflected on the, the, the feedback that they received. One important thing to note was that students in this, in this class um, didn't actually do this last task as well, at, or in, in many cases at all, um, as, as, as Anne had expected in Management 399, um, everyone completed all of the tasks, but she found that in, in Wharton 101, there were many group members who did not actually complete that last part of it. And you can see here from the analytics that there are several groups just on, on this list that you can see here who did not actually um, finish all of the, all of the, the assessment um, activities. But the analytics, again, made it really easy to see on a course by course basis who had done what. So looking ahead to fall 2021, we're really excited. In fact, just yesterday afternoon, we had the launch meeting to talk about uh, Wharton 101 this fall. And we're really excited about what Feedback Fruits allows for in this course. One of the things that we'll be doing is adding the configurable grading module so that it can, um, so that we can more easily uh, see who has completed what. 
Um, we're going to be reconsidering the framing of the feedback question and the criteria. Uh, in the legacy system, you really couldn't change anything. Um, but in this course, uh, we'll be able to um, more easily provide uh, instructions for students for what they should be doing within the feedback fruit, fruits prompt itself. Previously, we had been um, just relying on this, the sort of legacy set of instructions for what students should do. So we're going to um, sort of close that gap a little bit. Um, we'll also be looking at how to reframe the reflection step of that last step that students didn't complete to um, increase student completion for that. And then we're also going to be looking at one of the pain, one of the um, lingering pain points for this was uh, how to handle students who were who were late at completing this. So this is also something that we're going to be looking to see what we can do in terms of the configuration of the assignments to make that part a little bit easier because across 12 sections with 650 students, obviously, if there's any undergraduate at Wharton at all who's going to be turning work in late, they are in this class and they're turning it in late. We need a way to to handle that. So we're going to be looking at, at, at options for that. And then finally, one of the other things that we're doing is we're adding interactive video to this course. In fall 2020, um, there was one pilot interactive video assignment that was used and it worked really well. And you can see here on the, the right hand side, um, uh, the overview of that interactive video assignment. So we're going to be adding that into all of the asynchronous lectures for this course. The um, faculty will be identifying a few questions that they want students to answer as they move through the, the lecture video and then the Wharton 101 teaching team will have um, a more reflection oriented question um, at the end for students to respond to. And we're really excited about the, the potential for this and the way in which this can um, add more engagement into uh, students experience with the asynchronous videos and also the way that the, the, the configurable grading for this can um, report back on on how much students have done. So um, that's all I have for you today. And I look forward to hearing whatever questions that you might have uh, and discussing more of that either in now if we've got time or in the networking sessions if we don't. Thank you. Thanks very much, Linda. Another excellent presentation. And uh, I do see one question referring to uh, from Chris Leiby, who asked about syncing groups and uh, group structure from Black Gold Ultra. I'm sorry to steal your uh, thunder, Linda, but I'll answer that. Yes, it's possible to recreate and uh, sync those groups. Uh, you can find more in the Help Center. It, did you have something to add, Linda? Oh, just so I was just one thing that I was just going to say about that is um, one of the things that we often experience with students, especially in larger classes, although it happens in smaller classes too, is that is that groups change, right? Like groups, students join groups or students fail to join groups and only join groups late. And one of the things that we found is that is that uh, feedback fruits will automatically sync those sync those groups and tell you when the last time was that the groups were synced. So you can see really readily and really easily whether um, a, ch a last minute change that was made is actually reflected in the assignment and students will see when they go in to complete the work. Um, the first thing that they see is, is who the members of their group are. So if there's a problem with that, they can also reach out uh, to our team for assistance um, uh, at that point. Thanks very much.